Okay, I think it's going now. Test, test. Test, test. Check. Check, check, check. Um, well, I feel like that, uh, we were just talking about uh, the uh, using Audition over other tools, right? Mm -hmm. And I feel like for a long time, I was caught up in the idea of um, uh, trying to get everything, <laughs> trying to get everything perfect. Yeah. Um, so I, I was like, I was waiting, I was waiting until I got all the perfect like programs yeah. and, and tools. And I was like, I, I waited like an extra, probably like two or three months longer than I should have. Totally. To before I actually started doing this. No, thing. and that's yeah. I think that's what a lot of people run into that, especially you watch the YouTube videos, and that you need this and you do that, but it's you know. Yeah, you have to get the rim light and stuff. The right? most important thing is just starting. Yeah, yeah. And like that, and you can always improve quality. I don't right. know. I mean, you're doing three cameras. That's better than most people. Like I said, I don't even use three, but crazy. Well, I appreciate you doing this, man. Of course. It's just super cool of you. Yeah. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself to my millions of followers? Of course. So I'm so nervous now. I am uh, <laughs> Slu Sam Lewis. I'm an artist here in Brooklyn. Christian was nice enough to come down by my studio. But yeah, I make art videos, share my process of creative projects. I'm starting a podcast. And I do a little of everything within social media, but, you know, art centered around art and painting. And yeah, I guess that's the spiel. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I guess, I guess, like, I really want to talk to you because, I mean, I've been following your stuff for a while and I, I feel like, uh, I really admire the way that you do things in mm. the sense where you don't really ask for permission before you start, you know, you just do stuff and then see what happens and it, and it resonates with a lot of people, you know? Um, like it, I think it's like, again, I struggle with being the person that waits, right. and, like waits for permission, like yeah. waits for approval to right. like try and do shit. I hear you. But maybe like, you know, it maybe seems like that now if you watch my videos, but it, you know, I've been doing that for, I've been doing it for like five years. Right. So when I started, I was totally the same and like, I was timid or like even the first three years I did YouTube or was putting out content or like putting myself out there. Like I was so nervous to show my family or friends. Like I didn't, I didn't post it publicly on my Facebook or Instagram to my friends and family until like the only last two years because I was nervous of what people thought of me or I didn't want to, I didn't want people to know I had this other, like, I don't know, you know, so it's like, it's just a learning curve and you know, yeah. now it's like super normal. I don't care. And like right. I'll vlog in front of people, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I, I found that it's like, it, it definitely takes that, uh, like it doesn't happen overnight. You know? No. I think a lot of people might expect that totally. you do a YouTube video and if it doesn't do well, then mm. no, I, I guess this isn't for me, you know? Yeah. But it takes like five years before things start. Yeah, or no, or some people like will get lucky and it'll take better or some people are just naturally more extroverted and they understand, you know, being entertaining in front of a camera. But no, every like it's just, everything's a learning curve. And like, even like at my studio in my life now, like I'm constantly shoving cameras in people's faces that yeah. like, right. I've never done that. And then, you know, they'll mm -hmm. close up. Right. Even if they're super confident or super fun, like outgoing people, you know, it's just a weird thing. Not everyone, I mean, everyone has the cell phone in their face, but when you bring one of the bigger cams or even right. people on the podcast, like my studio has all the big lights and like, yeah. I'm like, ready? You're, st you're ready to start? And they're like, oh, really? Right. Yeah, so it's just learning curve, but you can get more familiar. And I mean, in terms of even how I think of myself, like I, I still look at back at videos and I cringe. And oh, yeah. Like, what am right. I doing? But, um, yeah, but, but but you don't take them down, you know? No, of course right. not, because no one cares, you know? Right. You're your own worst critic. I mean, whether it's in art or, like, you're drawing, writing, I mean, in terms of, like, critiquing yourself. But even, right. like, the the social anxiety or the anxiety of putting videos out, it's like, no one's ever going to care as much as you do. Yeah. Ever. That's, like, my motto. We were talking before about putting videos out and kind of being in front of the camera. Like, my motto internally and a lot of other influencers say this is like no one actually cares yeah you know it's like of course people do care and this is like a very ranty kind of conversation but you know like people will follow videos they're fans they're nice but like on instagram especially like they're swiping so fast through your stuff yeah you know they'll see it they'll like it and then maybe to you the person they'll be like oh everyone's looking at my stuff but no one really cares and like right. they're just on to the next one so that's like when I th think about it, I'm like, all right, so that just gonna just remove me from my emotions. So just keep putting stuff out, keep putting right. stuff out. No one really cares. Absolutely. That's maybe a little negative, but it's like it's the it's it's the uh, more dramatic mantra I tell myself to put more stuff out. You yeah. know. 
Well, and I, I feel like, I mean, we, we, we've been talking for like two hours, yeah. two, two hours now. And even, yeah. you know, we, we, were, we were pretty calm. But even now that I put the cameras on, there's yeah. still, I still I get a, a tinge of anxiety. Yeah. A tinge of like, oh, I, am, am I going to say something wrong? I hear you. Know? you. Yeah. And it's like, it's strange how I could talk to somebody, you know, like no problem at all, no anxiety until, until it's being recorded, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like, I don't know, I, uh, I I would like to think that I'm talking to you in the same way I would uh-huh. talk to anybody, but there's still that, like, now I feel like I'm being watched. Dude, you know? 100%. And same thing, like, even, like, you know, I'm on, you yeah, know? The right. podcast coming on. <laughs> and, you're yeah, <laughs> you're and so, like, yeah, you turn it on, you know? Because, yeah, yeah. like, you want to be entertaining or, like, you want it to be a little more, but I think that's natural, man. I yeah. mean, like, are there that many people who are so, like, rock solid, like... right centered crazy people who are just the same i don't know it's all part of the game part of the process but i feel like that's good you know yeah it means you care probably absolutely well and i think it's uh anyone that claims to not get anxious in front of a camera i think they're lying yeah because it's like i think no matter who you are you probably like i mean uh have you seen bill burnham's of course uh uh, i mean talking him talking about anxiety was like oh my god that guy gets anxiety yeah seriously it's like um i love that the newer one what was it called the uh, uh inside or? yeah yeah the, the quarantine one yeah yeah I, yeah I can't remember the name of it. Neither, but I loved that thought it was great um, it bummed me out it really did bum me out yeah it but. gave me anxiety honestly like, <laughs> I was having like a panic attack watching because yeah. how much of it related yeah. but I thought it was like a beautiful piece of art oh yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. to be so dedicated to that thing for that long mm-hmm. and just doing it by yourself but it was eerie you know it was like being yeah. alone he right. like subjected himself to kind of he showed like all the ports when like he was going crazy and like he was yeah. yelling at the camera. I was like, "Whoa, that's kind of hardcore." Yeah, you know, like right. damn, made me feel some type of way. Well, I, I mean, he's known as being this like goofy, like mix of Weird Al and yeah. like I don't know, some like raunchier musician. Yeah. But you know, it's again, it's like weird to see somebody go from like being like making fart jokes essentially to being like like a reasonable source on mental health. You know, totally and kind of like yeah dissecting his own mental health into some sort of narrative yeah it's totally yeah. he's smart he's a smart guy yeah yeah well and um i don't know the, the way i've been looking at all this stuff is like as long as i'm speaking the truth mm-hmm. and saying things that i believe in mm-hmm. it, it, it gets a lot easier to yeah. you know say like speak publicly you know totally because yeah, because you can't be anything else and especially that's what you want people to know you as and like yeah i think what we were just talking about like I think around my friends, my close friends, like I'm really like just a huge moron, like super yeah. stupid, right. saying the dumbest jokes, swearing or whatever. But, you know, then I have like my professional life where like I'm, you know, talking and business and painting seriously. So yeah. there's compartments. And then like now, like I'm trying to right. be myself, of course, and speak truth. But, you know, maybe I'm, you know, chameleon a little to, you know, tend to the podcast. I don't know. But I, I, I yeah. say thing. Like I, I, I get some ice cream? I kind of do. <laughs> we're in Brooklyn. Yeah, we're Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah I, I would actually get ice cream. But, yeah, I know. Um, I don't know, but I, I think it's like, I think it's actually human nature to do that. Yeah. You know? Like, I do that all the time. Mm-hmm. Like, I change a little bit about my person, personality to fit. Who, totally, you um, have to. And I, I don't know if it's necessarily that bad. You know, no. I, I think it's just part of being a human, yeah. actually. You no, know? it's natural. And again, like, it's like, you're not gonna, like, I would never be as stupid and moronic and lackadaisical with my close friends for my business and same yeah. with anyone in a job situation. Like yeah. you could be friendly and personable, of course, all, and you mix those, but like there's definitely different faces you part on for the different compartments of life. Yeah. Um, and it's not so extreme. Like I'm not, I would, I hope I'm not like a completely different person right. in my videos that I yeah. am with like my sisters and my mom or right. like my friends. But you, I think you have to, switch a little absolutely i think it's impossible to be like to be completely yourself in your videos because mm-hmm. it's a one-sided conversation yeah, you know it's call. like right. when you're talking to somebody else there's a push and pull mm-hmm. there's like oh if you say something awkward or not that they don't agree with they'll like have a have a reaction mm-hmm. or if they say if you say something good they'll have a reaction yeah whereas like if you're saying stuff in a video it's like at least in the moment yeah they're not there's no one like to tell you that was a bad thing to say or that was a good thing to say right you know? it, so, totally and I mean even to go further than that what I experience is like because it's one sided that's another thing people say like I had to do this public speaking thing where I was talking to people um, and I was 
or I had to give a speech in front of a lot of people for my friend's yeah. thing. And I was really nervous. And I was telling everyone how nervous I was to give this like five minute speech in front of like 60 people that were like kind of close to me. And like, you do it all the time in your yeah. videos. Like, how are you nervous? I'm like, dude, <laughs> I'm in a room by myself yeah, with right. a camera. Yeah. And I've been doing it for four years. That's way different than like public speaking. Speaking in front of hundreds of people. But what I was saying is like, you know, like when you, when it's just you and the camera, you get where I am so comfortable with it yeah. and but then that could be like it's so freeing that you think you're you know maybe you you, you, you put yourself on a pedestal and I'm yeah. like oh I'm talking I'm communicating so well and it becomes kind of like an ego trip at the same time right. uh, yeah, because yeah. there isn't that second opinion or right. you know you're not having a conversation you're just really like thinking out loud which right. sometimes isn't exactly the same as you are in real life well I, I found it's been it's been actually incredibly useful for me like again i was telling you i i oh, sorry part of the problem I have to keep uh, um i have to keep uh pressing the button every 15 minutes but I um i was telling you i i struggle more on the side of not believing in myself mm -hmm. and doing this has been a tremendous help and just mm -hmm. like saying stuff and not caring what people say yeah you know not caring about the worst case scenario and not yeah. caring about the best case scenario mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and then seeing it and putting it out there in some small way and having a positive uh, positive reaction to it. Right. You know, it's really strange. Yeah, I hear you. But like, what to dive deeper if you don't mind? What are you like? You're not good enough of what? Like, where are you? You're not. You know, um, like your anxiety, like just judging, just yeah, yeah, judgment, you know, judging like at a general level. Absolutely. Like, yeah. you know, maybe this is something that's going to like prevent me from working in a company someday. Oh, or, okay, I or see. You know, maybe it's like my parents wouldn't be cool with this. Right, or, yeah. You know, or it's like, or maybe I'm like not ready to talk about the things I'm talking mm -hmm. about. You know, it's just like a bunch of those thoughts come yeah. up. Yeah, you know? reservations. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, I think they're totally logical thoughts to have, but sure. they're also like dangerous. It's like, um, again, I the things that I'm saying are things that um, I've, I've been saying my entire life. Mm -hmm. It's just in a different more public context yeah. you know it's like if i am comfortable enough to say them to other people i'm comfortable i should be comfortable enough to say them on camera right? yeah no i, get, um, I mean that's again i think we were, we we're saying it's like a natural thing but i think something also that's that i go through is like as long as you're being honest and truthful like you said like you're yeah. telling the truth of yourself and you're giving it your best shot all this work to put it in like the opinions even if 20 kids say hey Christian, you're a genius. Like I think every said, uh, like I believe everything you said. It's amazing. Wow, this conversation changed my life. Or the opposite. Or both of them. Twenty other people said this podcast sucks. Yeah. Waste of time. Like right. it. Both of them shouldn't matter. Yeah. You know, it's like obviously, again, people. You want people to like you, of course, or to receive anything you make. But like, you gotta take both sides with a grain of salt. Yeah. And that's absolutely. what happens with me, or I try to, because a lot of, a lot of people show love on my videos. We're super supportive. Right. I get definitely hate all sort of like yeah. this portrait sucks, blah, blah, blah. But like, you got to take the good and the bad in the same realm, you know? Absolutely. Cause you can't just take the good because then that's just like, you're just place your ego. ego. Yeah. Well, and I feel like that's the downside of having a following is like when you have a million followers or a couple hundred thousand followers, you could be like a hundred thousand people think I'm fucking awesome, you mm -hmm. know? And it's like, and then 20,000 are going to think you're shit. Well, but, you also, you know, like, but it's like you might only listen to the great ones. Yeah, and you yeah, might just exactly. like inflate your ego. Exactly. You know? Totally. Like, I mean, I think that happens in like politics. Yeah. I'm not trying to go down the political route, but like, you know, the president, any person of power, you know, yeah. you got a lot of people loving you, a lot of people hating you. Yeah. Right. And then you, you know, of course, you're going to probably just only listen to people who love you. Right. And then you're not really like communicating or being exposed to the other. Well, and I think the, the problem is, is like when you're, when you're somebody, uh, when you're somebody that has a lot of power, mm -hmm. you know, it's like you still have the same amount of th like time in a day as everyone else. Mm -hmm. So like you actually don't have time to focus on everybody. So people around you might surround you with people that only agree with you. Exactly. You know? Like, yes, man. Yeah. 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 You know, and, and that's it, dangerous. Yeah. And it's like, um, I don't know. I, I'm reserving the right to be an idiot. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm for sure going to say stuff on this thing that I'm going to be like, that was a dumb thing to say. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Um, but it's like, I, I want to reserve the right to be wrong. I want to reserve totally. the right to like, you know, if I say something bad, I want to be okay with like, um, getting negative comments mm -hmm. because if it's like, you know, if one person tells you, you did a bad thing, yeah. okay, you know, maybe you can debate that, but mm -hmm. if 50,000 people tell you something, you did something bad, then it's like, okay, then yeah. I can change. Yeah, right? totally. No, dude, me too. I mean, this is the most situation, situation cause I'm starting my podcast, but like. 
I'm gonna make the shit I wanna make. Yeah. And I don't care at all if people don't like it or they think I should change. Like on a lot of my comments, I've only put out four shows um, and a lot of them are like, you interrupt a lot. Like you gotta let the guests speak. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, that's constructive criticism. Like that's great. And like, I appreciate that. But if you're talking like, you're telling me you, I shouldn't talk about these topics or like I went too far down the rabbit hole. Um, like, you know, drink salt. Like, I don't care. Like, this yeah. is my show. Like, you yeah. clicked on the video. I'm not going to tend to you in that way, but... Right. Um, but, yeah. Well, and I, I don't know. I, I feel like the more I do this kind of stuff, the more I feel like it's a... It's like a path you follow rather than, like, a, a luck thing, you know? Mm. It's like you've been doing YouTube for, like, over five years. Yeah. You know, maybe close to a decade at this point, right? Yeah, well, I've, I had many other channels where I did, like, video games, Nerf guns, yeah. skateboarding, but this channel I have now, yeah, I think it's pushing over five years yeah and it, again it's like same you know spending time around stan it's like mm. same deal it's like it's not like you get super lucky with a few viral videos it's like consistency over a long period of time and getting lucky, and, and, and and getting lucky. Like, but, but yeah. it's way more the yeah. consistency than it is for sure. luck. for sure and yeah. i think it's like i mean that's what i i believe in academic training and mm -hmm. academic study and whatever you're trying to do just because it's like you need to be able to like communicate you need to be able to like say stuff with totally. you know and contribute in some way yes but at the same time it's like you know at a certain point you uh you need to like be okay with failing and you need to be okay with like just having faith in a process mm -hmm. of saying stuff out loud and just seeing what happens yep totally no i agree I'm, I'm completely in agreement with the academic route and there's nothing but prolonged long consistent work that's like the only true ingredient to success yeah. And and same with YouTube. I mean, the world is changing and it's very different now with TikTok and short form content and like the attention span of the glue sniffing people of the world, but um, me included. But um, I sniff pretty. <laughs> I sniff a lot of glue. Yeah. No. I mean, as a metaphor for just being like a consumer. But hey, yeah. It's like there. Consistency is so true for social media, and I feel like I talk about this a lot because it's just fun to talk about like the business side of social media, but there's now ways where you can really kind of hack the system yeah. and get a lot of views very quickly. And um, what that won't do was build an authentic following, yeah. but in terms of just the fear, sheer eyeballs, you could do that, like ZHC we were right. talking about, or other people on TikTok, kids, you know, like you could go quote unquote viral way easier now because yeah you play the emotions of the zeitgeist and whatever, but um, to to build a following and uh, people who are investing in you and your story and your work, whatever it may be, yeah. I can only speak from my personal experience, but yeah, that, that, I mean, it makes sense rationally that that takes time Yeah, because, you know, it's like a girlfriend or a good friend. You don't just like, I mean, they say love at first sight. I don't know if I believe that, but like it takes a long period of time and exposure and experience to get to know someone. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's more dramatic for social media, but you know what I mean. Well, and I, I think it's a, I mean, I've been getting into bike riding for the past two years. Nice. I've been doing like long distance bike ride. Oh. Not, not like super crazy, but like I did uh, near to Syracuse. Uh, well, that's kind of crazy. Well, yeah, I, I, I guess I'm comparing myself to the people who do like cross country. Yeah, that shit, is completely insane. Lactic acid to talk about that. Uh, but it's like the cool, it's like the best, man. It's so that's, awesome. That's I mean, crazy. it's, it's like one of the, like, uh, the longest I've done in a day is 112 miles. That's insane. It was uh, Orient to New York. Where's Orient? Uh, near Montauk. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, way out there. Yeah, yeah. Holy yeah. macaroni. And at mile like 60 or 70, it's like you're not doing it for the attention. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not because you're in so much pain. You're mm -hmm. not doing it for the likes. It's like I'm doing it because I if I don't do it, I, I have to sleep on the street tonight. Yeah, you know? no, totally. And it's like having that, it, it's been like a... Um, you know, like burning the boats, mm -hmm. like having like, like having to do it for reasons other than like getting the clout of going really, really far on a bike or something, or just to like brag about it. Yeah, to share it. Hey, look at this marathon I did. Blah blah blah. Because it's profoundly painful to mm -hmm. do that stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's like it's it's amazing. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah. You know? I mean, it sucks during it, but after yeah. it's like, holy shit. Well, like, yeah, it's so an awesome. Man. Man. That's crazy. Um, and I feel like it's the same thing for YouTube stuff or starting a business or any of it, where it's like you're not doing it. Like if you if you're doing it for money or for attention, it's gonna show very quickly. Oh yeah. And you're gonna quit because you're gonna get burnt out. Where if it's for something deeper, like totally. you know, you actually might be able to gain more followers faster if you did the iPad painting stuff, you know. Yeah. But you like the fine art stuff. You like oil painting, Love it. you know. Yeah. And it's like a 
I think there's like a meaning in there that actually makes you more successful. Yeah, yeah and it's driven by my passion. And yeah. we were we were having this great conversation. We had, we were talking for like two hours again yeah. before this. We should record it all, but <laughs> everything should be driven by passion because that is the avenue that is the most authentic. It will drive you to become become better, working harder. It doesn't become work because you you enjoy it. Yeah. Um, but. You know, and then it could possibly lead to something. But, you know, like my, my channel, again, talk about my experience specifically because that's all I can really talk about is, you know, it was never, I never thought I would be able to make money. Like yeah. maybe it was like one neuron in my head, a pipe dream. But yeah. like I followed so many YouTubers, followed so many murals, graffiti writers and other street artists. And I was like, wow, that's so freaking cool. I want to do that. And I want to make videos about it. I want to be able to do that. And I want to be able to make videos yeah. about it. So that was just me doing it. And then me being my own biggest fan, watching my own videos, getting a GoPro, taking time lapse, being like, holy shit, like look at this time lapse, putting it up. Yeah. And of course, you know, you want to sprinkle in viewership, but it was, I did that for like four years, three and a half, four years of getting almost no views, yeah. taking it real seriously. Yeah. Like a part-time job went to different universities, continued to do it. And then only in the last like two years did, you know, you know, financials come in and I could support myself. But, um, it, like you said, if you start out with this, um, with the end goal and the, uh, what, what was it, what did you say before the journey over the destination? But if the destination yeah, yeah. is money and success and a following social media, like, first of all, the journey is going to suck because you're going to get let down yeah. and you're probably not going to reach the destination because you're going to just be so butthurt about working mediumly hard and not getting a following. Or, or you actually get there and you're like, I'm not happy. Yeah. Know? Because it's not what you thought. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. whatever passion or whatever craft and experience you're into it's just going to get destroyed well which actually might be worse yeah right it might be worse to get to, there and not totally. authentically like it than yeah. to not get there at all right you know? and i don't want to speak so generally because i don't want to be a hippie dippy because now of course and even through the time of not getting paid like i still was trying to finesse like to make it and get yeah. viewership like it's, it's in a pie chart of the agenda and yeah. like of course there's a sliver of the pie chart that is how do we optimize viewership? How do we get more out of everything? And how do we perhaps make more money? Especially if it's a business, you would be stupid not to look at the numbers and yeah. optimize everything. But you know, the, the, the core motivation and everything should come from like a point of interest and passion. Hey, I want to do this because I want to do this. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I don't think it's, I don't think capitalism is evil. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's uh, but money is uh, money is pretty addicting. You know? And it's, it it's just be. a slippery, toxic slope of yeah. undulating, weirdness yeah yeah well and i i think it's a uh, i think it's important to have a couple years of like not being well known in order to like uh like because it's good for you it, it shows you like that you actually enjoy it and you're authentically yeah. doing it and you know um the, I, you know I, I was we were talking about this earlier but the question that i ask everybody is would you be doing the exact same thing you were, you're doing right now if you had a billion dollars yeah. And if your answer, your answer is pretty much yes, yeah. just at a larger scale. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And like, just like, well, that's exactly right. And I, I say this to people also, and especially with the money thing, I talk about this money all the time and I raised money for this studio. Um, and you know, it's to make money is just to facilitate what I'm already doing and to continue doing it. It's yeah. like, I'm not, I'm making a certain amount a month because I need to pay for the studio. I need to pay for my apartment, food, blah, 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 obviously. But also I'm gung ho about optimizing and making as much money as I can through my business because I only want to facilitate these things more. Yeah. I only want to do more projects or I want to hire other people to help me make bigger projects. Right. I'm not going to buy a Ferrari, you know, I'm not going to go to France and just right. like dick around. Like I'm just, uh, I, capital is important in the world but especially just to facilitate more things, you yeah. know? And like, yeah. I would be happy just painting and doing myself now, but you know, everyone has ambition and you know, like everyone has desires to do more different things, perhaps on a bigger scale. So that's what I tell people. And it yeah. sounds kind of dick and like, you got to put on that asshole business hat, but it's, it's, it's true. It's like, I just want to be able to scale up to do awesomer things. Well, and, and ultimately it's, I think it's actually a very liberating thought to mm. realize that because it's not about what anyone else is doing. Yeah. You know, it's about what you're doing, right. you know? Of course. Yeah. And it's like trying, like I was talking to Stan about this where I, for a while I was like, you know, making money is immoral making, I mean, from the perspective, it's like, um, it's hard to be 
part of capitalism without like taking advantage of somebody in some way. Right? Yeah, for sure. And or yeah, yeah, being skeevy and you're always trying to slipperize to get more yeah. out of money or spend less to get more. I hear what you're saying. Well, but I, I think the um, other set, uh, other point of view for why it's okay is because people are making their own decisions. You know, mm. it's like people are ultimately have free will and have the choice to like, I'm going to do this thing and I'm going to work for, you know, not as much money as I as I have. And I guess the reason I bring this up is like, um, the more risk you take on, the more potential reward you have. It's not necessarily about how hard you work. It's about the risk that you take on relative to, you know, know, relative to what you're doing. Totally. Uh, I think that's, I mean, again, we said, I said this again earlier. It's like if the formula for success was just working really hard, you know, there would be a lot more successful people. Oh yeah. You know, it's, it's like, that's a baseline. And then like you said, switching the beans up taking yeah. risks and putting the marbles in places you didn't think and working really hard on top of that plus a sprinkle of luck a yeah. lot of luck you right. know yeah yeah um well and i guess part of the billion dollar question is like um you really don't need that much to do what you really want to do i think the only reason the only thing that the money gives you is security mm-hmm. it's like you can buy a house and not worry about food you know yeah um, you can buy a car to get around and stuff. You don't ever have to worry buy about money. Buy a few cars with a billion dollars. Yeah, yeah. Or, or one really nice one. Yeah. No, that's um, true. And then but what people don't remember, and again, I hate to like preach as if I'm some motivational speaker, but I think I would probably take a billion dollars if you're a genie Christian and you gave yeah. it to me. But I know that like there's so much fulfillment with working hard yeah. and the grind and the hustle and like and so I think that's overlooked. And of course, people in different financial situations, and of course, they, you, having money could be super helpful to get out of bad situations and student loans. But like, if we're talking about just kind of like the normal job, like having all the money up front, y- you you get so much enjoyment from working hard. And actually, the the freedom and the weekends or the vacations with the girlfriends and whatever. Um, speaking metaphorically it's like those times are better because of the hard work and yeah, the grind absolutely. you know and so like if it's just good 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 money 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 you're gonna get depressed real fast because there's so much fulfillment from um kind of like eating shit yeah or not eating shit and it's well, like drawing it, it's like taking on suffering yeah right? exactly exactly and like i tell this to kids i had i don't know very recently some kid dm me and basically i was like do you like what if you woke up like probably a kid who's like 15 I was like what if you woke up and you were a master oil painter drawer like as good as these guys we were talking about Cesar Santos Watts or Proko like yeah that would be pretty cool but like the funnest fucking part about drawing is seeing yourself incrementally improve yeah and looking back on your drawings from three years ago being like wow look at how far I've come right you know like that's the best part the best part it's like the journey and like we keep saying that and it's we're beating a dead horse. Well, yeah, I, I think things are cliches because it's like common. It's it, they become cliches because it's like yeah. fundamental truth. I you know? completely agree. And I, I say that a lot because I love cliches, but it's true. It's like, even for my paintings, like I love oil painting and like people are like, we love your, you know, graphic style. And like, I get a lot of views on YouTube for that. And I yeah. love it too. But it's like, I love oil painting because it's such a puzzle and it's yeah. such a language. And I love problem solving and I love, you know, breaking apart the light and like mixing colors and the color, th- like all of the, obviously that stuff you are um, attuned to also, but like the final product is great also, like, yeah. but not as much as like the process, yeah. you know, being in the midst of it or my favorite part about oil painting is like starting. Yeah. It's like, oh shit, right. what's well, gonna go down? Oh, you know, yeah, like yeah, I yeah. have a plan or maybe I don't, right. but like. Is it gonna fail? Yeah, yeah. and like, of course, uh, looking at a nice painting at the end is wonderful, especially if it's a commission or you um have a vision for Can, something yeah yeah one well, it, it's like if you're an oil painter you're going to experience a lot more failure than yeah you know success and yeah um uh, something that i ask everybody is a similar question where it's like you know you're suddenly the best draftsman of all time and you do the best painting ever and everyone acknowledges yeah. it's the best painting ever do you stop painting you no know? yeah but yes okay that's a good one but i think that's a bummer yeah because for yourself maybe and also other people looking in on you it's like you 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 become you get on this pedestal and you don't want the pedestal it's like um it's hard to get back to that 
best painting or whatever, like whatever yeah. internally you think of as the best painting. It's like, I think, uh, people talk about that for like Eminem and like Eminem was so polarizing. He was so talented. He was one of the biggest artists for a while in the early two thousands. And you put him on this like God level, goat level, like, yeah. and so then from that point, everything he makes, especially now he's not as popular or people don't like his music as much. It's all subjective, of course, but yeah. the general consensus it's like you can't get back to that yeah. and it's not you or he can it's like the people's opinion yeah. you get put on this pedestal of genius you know savant best artist everything you make is the uh, number one hit it's like you can't get higher than that so yeah. you'll, you'll be failing or you'll be lackluster to everything so right. I forgot your question or whatever I, like, I don't think it's that would be a good thing yeah yeah like, 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 like if you're the best yeah. artist right yeah and I would I think continue painting but like you know the the great thing again to speak very dramatically which I love I'm a yeah. modern thespian yeah but um is like the infinite possibility of improvement within oil painting right. and or like you know if you got you know a million of the best oil painters or the million million oil painters of the world and you told them to paint a portrait of you right you know a lot of them would be, would be really similar but they would probably be only different in their own ways and that's why it's so epic because right. there's a million different ways and also for your personal practice you can never like jeffrey watts like like i said i thought he's probably top 10 yeah. draftsman in the world but he's still disgustingly hungry to improve right yeah, like absolutely. it's crazy yeah are you right. kidding me but that's why it's awesome well i think the better you get the more uh, your your own mistakes become apparent to you, mm, you know. Yeah. And I think it's part of the price of getting better is you stop. Yeah. Like, you know, it's it's it becomes so much less about uh, impressing other people, and it becomes so much more about fixing your own mistakes. Right. You yeah. Know? And like, I mean, he like how many people can see a figure like him? You know, yeah. like to dissect it and the muscle right. memory to replicate it. It's like, yeah, at some point you have to be that. Well, and I, I think another part of art is art is in, is so incredibly subjective. Mm. It's crazy. Totally. Like, I was uh, listening to uh, like a John Singer Sargent biography book cool. on my way over here. It's like 25 minutes long, but um, and uh, they were talking about how John Singer Sargent wanted to stop doing fine art oil paintings because uh, often his sitters wouldn't like them, you know, because Whoa. I mean it, it was like 50-50. Some, yeah. some people really liked them, others really hated them, you know, and some of them. Uh, their sitters dislike so much that they destroyed them you know Dude, and it's like John Singer Sargent right yeah. and it's like um, it's part of the reason he wanted to stop doing them is because people like uh, you know didn't appreciate them they didn't like them mm -hmm. you know and you're, that's John, John Singer Sargent yeah. it's like one of the most successful portrait painters yeah. of all time totally. you know um, and even he had struggles with like people not liking his work yeah that's you know? crazy that's very interesting um, and I think again it's like eventually like you know, even if you are a master, it's like there are plenty of people that don't appreciate Jeff's art, you know, just because they don't like oil paintings. They like totally, you know, whatever else. It, it's so true. And I've, I've had this conversation a lot now, the subjectivity of art, because I think it is really interesting because especially when you're kind of talking about the upper echelon of, um, like naturalism and the academic world, which we're both familiar and you're more than me. Um, but like, and of especially like I've been trying to how to, I'm trying to talk about this a lot. It's very hard, but like just art in general, yeah. like that word right. means nothing almost now. Yeah. Like what does art mean? It's like, I have no idea. You know what I mean? It's like, Oh, I'm an artist or he just made a piece of art. It's like, it's nothing now. And in my opinion, I think like, I never want to be pigeonholed in like adjectives and categories, but I think it's also very important to have like words yeah. and realms. It's like. I'm a cinematographer, YouTuber. I, I do naturalistic painting and like figurative stuff and I try to represent reality. Um, I'm not, you know, just that. And I could do any other things and I also do other things, but like, I don't want to be compared. I don't want to just be a painter, you know, because yeah. I'm, I'm specifically studying and working hard for other things. Whereas yeah. like, so I'm just saying the, the, the adjectives or descriptor words get very lost and it's like, obviously so subjective right but there's just like so many things that go into it it's like a very hard conversation like contemporary art abstract like conceptual things it's like i'm not doing that so i don't why would i be like why would i want to be compared to the words or and, and it's not anyone's fault the general public like a lot of it's actually interesting you're kind of really in the world 
but <clears throat> like my sisters or my friends, like they don't really understand the atelier world or like yeah. the traditional. Like it's very specific. Yeah. Um, built and you know made through tradition and f- fundamentals and theory and like obviously producing successful work through that. But like a lot of people don't know that. So like if I go to a museum with my sisters or like an art show yeah. with friends, like I'm I know I'm looking at the painting differently than they are, and they're consuming it completely differently because they haven't studied the things or the value structure or like what's the focal point of this painting. They're kind of just yeah looking at the painting. Right. And so that's the subjective thing and it's not their fault and it's not their uh, agenda or mind to like look at it like me or I should like be have baby eyes like them but then it like it you, the conversation of talking about it becomes different and yeah. you know what I mean absolutely mega rant yeah <laughs> well, no, but, but I, I think it's again going back to the subjectivity of art it's like a lot of people actually just don't care about the atelier stuff yeah. and for a lot of people drawing is just a medium to communicate an idea and mm-hmm. for a lot of other people you know, watching a movie is a way more engaging than looking at a painting, mm, you know? Totally. Um, and it's like, I, I think that I, I mean, I, we both obviously appreciate traditional drawing and painting. But, yeah. Um, I also think that the modern masters like the Bougaros or the Velasquez or whoever mm. else of our time, they're not painting, you know, mm. they're making movies or they're, yeah. you know, I agree. You know, they're, they're doing these epic. Yeah. Christopher you know, Nolan. Yeah. Um, and ultimately it's like a, um, painting is just a form of communication, yep. you know, and it's like um, you painting instead of doing something else is part of the actual art of it. Is mm-hmm. that you're, you know, you have these tools that are better, right? But you're choosing to not use them because there's something about traditional art that is communicating what you really want to communicate yeah. clearer than those things ever could, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, well put. Um, yeah, I totally agree with that. And it's totally interesting. Yeah, that's a very interesting that you said that. Like, yeah. I mean, I think there always there always will be painting. There always will be, even as traditional and as technology increases. Like I think people always paint. Yeah. People will always throw clay or like, you know, do claymation animation. But yeah, I think I wonder like when we're older, who are going to be the quote unquote artists again? That word, yeah. like that are going to be the genius artists. You know, I think like Scorsese. You know, yeah, yeah. People it, look at him. It's not the painters. Huh? Yeah, it's not yeah. the painters and. Or the, maybe it's like musicians. Like I know, like Michael Jackson. Like that's already kind of cemented because right. he died also. But that's totally interesting. And the mediums will probably change. Yeah, yeah. Over time. Well, I mean, they're changing all naturally. The time. Yeah, I mean, it's like VR is mm. you know a huge yeah. thing for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Or uh, just I guess digital painting as well. I yeah. Mean, no, totally. Like um, visual effects. Yeah. I'm very into that. Do yeah. I corridor digital at all? Oh yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Love those guys, and I yeah. I love it. I think it's so interesting. Um, and that's like taking the world by storm. Like kids are growing up, yeah. probably more interested in learning how to use Blender and Cinema 4D yeah. than watercolor and yeah, absolutely. painting. Yeah, yeah. makes sense. Well, I think it's I think it's actually better for society because oil painting has a bar of entry to say the things you want to say that mm. you know, like Blender doesn't, yeah. right? Or digital painting doesn't, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and it's like. Uh, Maybe it would be better if AI just painted for us and we could just tell it ideas yeah. and then it just, you know, did exactly what, what it, you know. Oh, God, yeah. Um, and it's like, maybe that'd be horrible, but maybe it'd actually, like, give a lot more people a, a voice, yeah. you know? No, I think, like, what, well, it's also interesting, like, if you think of, like, the agenda of painting way back when, again, I'm no art historian, but, like, you know, it was it was a function to represent, you know, biblical stories and like yeah. give the church like propagandist like imagery you know they weren't yeah. painting because like they were like i want to express myself of course people were but like way back then you know it was like functional yeah. they didn't have cameras it's like if you want to you know a monarch wanted to be painted to be revered and to be seen after he died and his legacy and so that was the point it was yeah. to capture reality and now that it's you know, second nature, everyone has a supercomputer in their pocket, like that function dies and then you are painting just to have fun or communicate it in a yeah. different way. And as the technology goes, AI, and yeah. who knows what the point of everything else will be, you know? And it's going to be completely unpredictable. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Right. And it's like the only thing that we can do as individuals is just keep doing what we're doing. Yeah. Like care about what we care about and then see what happens, mm-hmm. you know? Um, Cause it, you know, is now dead. Dang it. 
Gorilla. Gorilla. So you edit this part out, or you just keep the middle going? I'm gonna keep the middle going. Yeah, because uh, nice. Yeah, I yeah, love it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's a strategy. Yeah. So I mean, it's um, one is laziness. Two is just like this is like. I don't know. I, I want to try and keep it as close to like a real conversation. Also. No, I love it. Yeah. I think it's true. I think it's great. I hardly edit mine also, but three oh, cameras. Oh. Yeah, you just you rip the middle. We're wide right now. Yeah. Sinking everything. Sinking. Yeah. yeah. Oof. Um, I feel you, man. But yeah, I think it's a uh, like. Um, Traveling in this way is really strange mm. because you see, I've seen so many different varieties of just ways of living. Yeah. Know? It's like people that are like working at a coffee shop and that's their entire life. Mm. You know, serving people coffee is the most meaningful thing in their lives where I'll hang out with other people who are t telling you about my friends who are hiking guides or then other people who are like, you know, they're taking care of their parents who are mm. sick or they're like running a 10 million, $30 million company or something. And it's like, the range of their lifestyles is all, it's sub, its like objectively very different, but mm -hmm. subjectively they're dealing with the same stuff. It's yeah. like anxiety, like worrying about feeling validated, like mm -hmm. worrying about like wasting their time, mm -hmm. you know, worrying about like, w are they gonna regret what they're doing totally. right now on their deathbed, yeah. you know? And it's strange seeing that it's like, I really, for a long time, I was telling you, I, I this trip has affirmed my belief in a God existing. Yeah. And I feel like for a long time I was like, caught up in the idea of certain religions being right or wrong mm. you know it's like how could you be be a christian like how can you be sure that the christian god exists when islam and judaism and, and buddhism like thousands of others. um and it's it's not about one being more right and wrong overall it's about one being more right and wrong for you because mm -hmm. i think fundamentally they're all pursuing the same thing which is truth yeah and Are you were you a religious person growing up i was catholic raised okay. catholic but I, I don't consider myself catholic yeah. or anything but I feel like it's um, like I could go to a Buddhist temple or a a mosque or something and probably have a very nice religious experience, but I would fit in probably better at a Christian church because more people are like me. Mm. You know, they probably are from a similar area, same same interests. You know, um, and it's like that's more true to me. Where mm. somebody from Asia or the Middle East might it might be more true for them to be yeah. Jewish or. Yeah. you know something else you have the sort of innate beliefs and it, systems of beliefs and it's the same thing with painting it's like uh there are people that love academic art that you know uh will, would never become digital illustrators yeah. who paint orcs and stuff yeah. um and it's like but there are people that would never do academic art and all they would yeah. do is like you know but they're still all pursuing some sort of like visual creation absolutely and and so that's a good yeah and one isn't higher than the other no it's just course. you know particular to the person you know yeah, uh, religion's bizarre, man. And like, that was really beautiful how you kind of set up that analogy. And so, not to be too forward, but like, so when you say a god, do you mean like a real person or a divine no. power? You're just saying some sort of basic. It's something I can't understand. It's yeah. Something that's like, um, you know, it, it's strange going around and seeing, like, if you watch a dog play with a stick, mm. right? It's like that dog is getting a tremendous amount of meaning out of playing with that stick, right? And it's like, yeah, but do you know that, or yeah. you're just saying like we can see well, that dog, that dog is enjoying it. It's enjoying it. It's like right. that's the most important thing to that dog. Sure, right. And it's like on a cosmic scale, mm -hmm. that dog playing with that stick is the same thing as you playing, or, you know, making YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. You know, it's on like, a cosmic scale, yeah. Yeah, it's like ultimately they're both meaningless. Well, right? yeah, it's, you could just think of it as like a binary. It's either a one or a zero. Well, and it's it, it, like that, yeah. But but it's like to that dog, it's not. It's obviously meaningful. You okay, know? yeah, I see what you're saying. Um, and it's to you, it's like obviously meaningful to make YouTube videos, mm -hmm. you know? And it's like, I think it's a big part of this, like the argument against nihilism for me that really got me to like, okay, I really believe in this stuff is like, um, to n like life isn't meaningless because you have eyes, right? Mm -hmm. Like life is meaningless because you're able to see, like a meaningless life would be not to have any senses, not to be able to touch, feel, smell, see, or anything. Mm -hmm. Um, and just by the fact of you being able to see like meaning out of uh, like if you look at me objectively I'm just uh -huh. a pile of like iron and blood and guts and bones yeah you know? well, electricity in there yeah but the subjective it's like I'm another person yeah you, totally you know? no I hear you um, and it's like the fact that we're able to like be these 
objective, just like nothing. Mm -hmm. right? We're just like a pile of stuff. Um, but there's like a meaning there. There's like, there's something there that isn't just a, the, the objective reality. Yeah. And you think that's like, so maybe like your version of, I'm sorry, I'm very interested in this because I, I think I struggle with like, not like my belief system, but yeah, I think I, I tend to go towards a nihilistic route and I'm very, I wasn't raised religious and I have some friends who are, but not many. And I never believed in God yeah. or even close, like really never subscribed to any kind of religious beliefs. And like I said, my closest one, I just semester in Southeast Asia and like I wasn't trying to become a, a Buddhist, but it was like we were learning all about Eastern philosophy, super interesting, yeah. especially in another place in the world that's like extremely different from us. And then I went to Naropa, which was a Buddhist university and it was all experiential learning, but I didn't even subscribe to it there. I was just like very uh, uh, experience hungry. Yeah. And still to now, like, I don't, yeah, I just don't, what I believe in is honestly like science and just a kind of like right. action reaction. But the way you're talking about it is very um, um, consumable to me and, and very well put. But it is still, I feel like, a kind of a general yeah. viewpoint. Well, I, I feel like it's, um, whenever I thought about the idea of God logically mm -hmm. in terms of like trying to rationalize like proof for God mm -hmm. or, you know, it's like a, I feel like that's where I, I start to think about it incorrectly. Yeah. You know, it's like the idea of God is like, um, I guess the argument for God is that there's so much evidence around us already that you don't need, you know, it's like this is, but this is what, what is already, you know, right, right, right. It's right, like right. when you think of the universe as a whole, it's way crazier than any piece of fiction. Like, totally, totally, totally. It's like the fucking Milky Way exists out of billion, like something I could never even come up with. No, right? it's like humans can't even fathom the scale. And it's like, what the universe that's, is. that's way wackier than Lord of the Rings totally, or Star Wars. Totally, <laughs> you know, totally, it's like, totally. you know, and just the range of like, you know, again, I have, like we were talking about this earlier where it's like, I have no idea how this van got here. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like, I mean, I drove it here, but I don't know. Like, like somebody built this, yep. somebody built yep. all this stuff. Somebody built the ship lap. Somebody built this fence. And, yeah. um, it's like, I can go about my life never thinking about that, mm. you know? And it's like, the problem isn't the lack of meaning in the world. It's our ability to like see it. It's our mm. ability to zoom in on things. And when you think about it that way, it's like, we don't see objects. We see, tools and we see like the me. idea almost yeah we, we see yeah. the idea it's yeah. like when you look at a hammer you don't see iron and mm -hmm. wood you mm -hmm. see a hammer yeah you, you know? put the definition on it um yeah and it's like when you see thing it's like when you look at the world you don't see the objective reality you see the meaning mm -hmm. you know um and in a godly sense it's like um the idea of god doesn't see um, the objective reality, it sees the meaning, yeah. you know, and like you are in the made, you are made in the vision of God, mm -hmm. right? You can create in some small way, but it, it's, it is still like a holy, yeah, again, it's weird for me talking this way. No, no, I'm really yeah. interested. That's why I'm kind of primed, but yeah, yeah, the, you're well-spoken. So it's interesting. It's kind of like the ship of Theseus, you know, that, yeah. I mean, I'm going to botch this and it's, it's more of like a, uh, identity uh, philosophical identity exercise but it's like ship of Theseus there's a boat I'll do the quick version it's like he and I don't know if this is really relates to a conversation but I'm already in it so I'll go I'll go down the rabbit hole like he comes back from war and there's a ship in the dock and it's amazing and over the years a couple planks like it's not going out to sea anymore but it's in the dock and it needs to be refurbished so they'll replace a plank here yeah. the shipmaster will do that and then he actually Theseus dies whatever and the ship stays there for the town and to, you know, as like a version of hope and prosperity for the people. And over the years, you have to replace way more things, planks, the sails. And, you know, 100 years later, uh, the shipmaster, the dock master and his son actually have collected all of the replaced pieces. Yeah. And they build another ship yeah. with the original parts. Right. And so what is actually... The original boat. The original boat, you right. know, like the one that gets changed slowly over time yeah. and its identity. Or is it the actual physical pieces? Right. I don't know how that fits in. Well, what we're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I probably watched that I, I mean, theological I, story. I'm sorry. Like, like as, as so I clicked this one? Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, oh, oh, wait. Uh, you're right. I clicked the wrong one. This there you go. Oh, uh, no, but, but like, as a person, like, I'm sure you've heard this, where it's like every seven years, every cell in your body is replaced. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, and it's like, but it's like objectively, you're a different person, right? But mm. subjectively, that's not true. There you, you go. Know? You um, said it way more elegant. Yeah. Oh. And it's, it's like, again... Um, 
like in a sense the past and the future don't exist there's only the true moment mm. right now yeah. you know um and it's like the only reason you are uh arthur sam lewis right go. now is because that's how you existed in the past mm. but there's nothing like i guess the only thing that's dictating the future is that you know idea that you have of, of who you were mm. you know that like yeah. memory that like thing in your brain that like the world hasn't changed no. at all you yeah know? but it's it's like you you know yeah. it's like a collection of neurons and little like synapses in your brain that collect to be your and the experiences maybe that you've been through yeah right? like, absolutely that's all i think actually joe rogan talked about we were talking about how we both love joe rogan like he was saying he said something great where it's like I forget, but it's like you are what you've experienced. Like your yeah. reality is just a group of positive and negative experiences, you know, kind of immortalized not well in your memory. And, you know, that's all, or that's all reality is just, a, you know, a group of experiences. Yeah. Well, um, and, and it's like a, um, like what you value determines what you see, mm -hmm. you know, where it's like, um, I don't, I don't know if I believe in free will in the traditional sense, but it's like, what you value when you walk down the street determines what you see on the street. It's like, do you see the graffiti or do you see the, yeah. you know, the, you know, Ford GT, right. you or know, the suffering of homelessness and or, like things like that or the plants or, yeah. you know, the sidewalk or the construction, right. you know, and it's like, it's everything at once, but it, yeah. it's like on, only what you like, only what you value determines what you're paying attention to. You know? That makes sense. I agree with that. Yeah, but is it? But is it also? Is it possible to look at everything? No. That that would be like that seems like rational in the sense that like that's the only way to perceive. Well, and it's like going back to the art stuff. Fundamentally, it's like I think the thing that makes a person a person is their inability to see everything. Yeah. You know? Oh, it's true. Like, that like, would be like a real god. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Again, that's the idea. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, part of my belief in there being a god is like. There are ants exist, right? Ants mm -hmm. exist as something that's inferior to you mm -hmm. intellectually. So why can't mm -hmm. there be something that's more intelligent than a human? Sure. It's like, I think that's a logical step to make. No, I think so too. And I think if sport, of course, especially if you say, you know, if you could talk to an ant, could the ants prove that we exist? You yeah. know, right. we exist in their world, but maybe they don't even know what it is. It's just, right. you know, they're... Well, it, 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 the idea of ex existing doesn't even exactly you know just like food yes food. right Dorito they're already yeah. programmed when they live and die they're just programmed right. protect the queen follow the queen yeah yeah I and mean, well for us it's like yeah. you know make babies eat food yeah kill bison build <laughs> faster stronger yeah exactly that's interesting what was your thing about free will can you give me the lowdown on you said you don't know if you believe in free will well you can't actually determine what you value you know? Wait, wait, say it again. Sorry, I'm just trying to get schooled right now. You, you can't determine what you value. You can't you, you determine can, you what cannot, you value. You cannot control what you value at all. Mm. You know, it's like the reason you, you might... You don't believe that or you do believe that? I, well, you, I believe you have, you have a small amount of control over what you value. Wow. Where it's like, you know, would you care about painting if you were born in Southeast Asia in a village that had no exposure oh, so to... Oh, this is like a nature-nurture thing, kind of. I guess so in a sense where it's like okay. how much of you being born in, in Connecticut or like, you know, having your right. parents, you know, like subjected me to this experience and then right. I liked it. Okay. So I do believe I, I agree with yeah. that. And if it's true, like what you, but I don't think, you, I think you could still get into painting if you're born in Southeast Asia. I guess so, but it's less likely. Okay. Right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Um, I'm not saying you can't, but it's also like, um, you know, you kind of adopt the values of the people around you and it's at least when you're growing up. No, you know? I, I definitely believe that. Okay. Um, and it's like, you can, you know, you can kind of influence what you value, but it, it takes like a, it takes a lot of work and it, it, mm. it also like you can influence what you value, which is determined off your own values, which is based off, you know, uh, your own background and everything that, you know, like your parents mm -hmm. and your genetics and yes. Okay. So totally. Yeah. That's an interesting one. Um, I believe that you, you do like it, it, it's effectively the same because it feels like we have free will, mm -hmm. you know, it's like I could, um, like fly to Dubai right now, yeah. but I'm not going to. No, but of course. It's like, um, but you know, the whole free will thing is like, uh, it doesn't matter if you have free will or not. I think it's like, uh, I think so, sorry to interrupt. So do you think like you're you're already you're in a path like before you were born you were predestined to do something like do you believe in that no. not like the destiny like or that the universe has a you know a goal for you or you're you know you're 
you're going to be and where you're going to be because it's already plotted out. I think it's more complicated than that. I, I, think, I think it's like the idea of like, I mean, I was talking to a friend who's a Christian, like a devout Christian, and she was saying like um, when she hears the idea of like, oh yeah, God took this person because God wanted more angels. She's like, that's a horribly condescending, patronizing way of looking at why, yeah. why people die. You know, right. it doesn't over, oversimplifies it. Yeah, you know? for sure. It's like, oh, that baby died for the universe, for the greater. Right. It's like, yeah. oh, no, that's, that's not right. And, yeah, no, um, I don't believe that. I, I think that like, you know, we could go and become multi-billionaires in a year mm. if we just valued the correct things, mm -hmm. you know? Like, if we really valued becoming a banker or something mm -hmm. or becoming whatever else, it's like, that would probably put us on a kind of a linear path to being worth a boatload of money, sure. you know? Um, but at the same time, it's like, we don't value that, so mm -hmm. that's not even, like, a reality for us. It's not a it's not a path that is even plausible. And it's like, well, when you think about that, most paths are actually not even plausible to you. Okay. I believe in predestination in the sense where it's like, you know, there are 60 trillion paths that you can take, but you can only take a thousand, you know? Mm -hmm. There are only a thousand potential endpoints for you. Okay, yeah, that's a nice way of putting it. I agree with that also. Uh, but I also think you could do, I mean, no, yeah, I get what you're saying. You're a modern day philosopher. Oh, thank you. I'm getting lost in the sauce, but it's wonderful. <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, it's, it's an interesting conversation. I haven't thought about it a lot enough to like have like this conversation to be very fluid because I think I struggle with thinking about my beliefs, like I said, but like I don't give it too much thought because I think, um, which I, 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 I think that's a good sign. It, yeah. It's like, it's, it's a sign that you're in the right spot. Well, yeah. Um, <laughs> the universe. I'm in well, the right it, spot. It's yeah, like no. when you, when you, when you're, when you're caught up in like solving your day to day problems, you're not thinking about if it matters because mm -hmm. it does matter. It's yeah. like, um, you know, pain matters, mm -hmm. right? It's like people argue that, oh, like my life is meaningless. I don't feel like it's meaningful, but mm -hmm. if I punched you in the face, that would be the most meaningful thing to you in this moment. Mm -hmm. It's like you'd be, you would have no choice but totally. to think about it. My how. entire sentient reality would be centered around. Yeah, being punched uh, this, in the face. this hurts. This yeah. hurts a lot. Right? Yeah. And it's like maybe the meaning to life and good is like maybe bad is being punched in the face, mm. but maybe good is anything that gets us away from punching each other in the mm. face. You know, it's uh. like, um, you know, I, I think that's my definition of good and evil. It's like, um, it's not necessarily, it's like, maybe good is like Disneyland and like it's helping the poor and stuff, but maybe mm. bad is anything that gets us away from the Holocaust, you know? Or good is yes, anything yeah. that gets us away from the right. Holocaust. You know? So it's almost like a, the double neg, like, yeah. But, good is anything, is the inverse of the bad. Yeah. So it could be, yeah. And, and maybe the bad is anything that gets us closer to the Holocaust, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, um, it's a very complicated problem to solve because totally. the people that committed the Holocaust thought they were getting us closer or further away from whatever their definition of evil, of evil was. You know? My gosh. Um, it's we like a, are complicated people. We are. And it's, the world is. I was watching a, a World War II documentary a couple days ago and yeah. I feel like as I'm getting older I'm seeing that stuff as like I thought, holy shit that was a fucking person. You know? Totally. I'm well, very interested in war history just because I love history and specifically yeah. war history and um it's really some of the most fucked up shit ever. Those documentaries, I, I like sometimes can't even watch them. I want to swear I swore, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, we were swearing yeah shit, okay. fuck, yeah. shit. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, yeah. No, totally fine. It's gnarly, Vietnam was gnarly. It's, it's really surreal. I mean, yeah. there are people that are alive that were in Vietnam that mm -hmm. saw their friends killed, you know, did some horrible things and it's yeah. like, it's not that far away, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, for us, it's probably like, it wouldn't be that far for us to necessarily be in the in the shoes of somebody that had, to live that life. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think so. I mean, because those were the same people. Those people aren't that much different from us. Yeah, being drafted. Yeah, I mean, you know, that was just, like eighteen. Yeah. You know? Oh gosh. Yeah. No, completely. I mean, that's that's why the scale of the human experience is quite bizarre. It's really again. It's like it's strange. Like I played a lot of video games growing up, and nice. I thought I knew everything. You know, <laughs> and then as I get, get into the world, it's just like. I meet so many people all the time that make me look completely incompetent. Mm, you know? Totally. It's like, you'll meet somebody. It's like, oh yeah, I ran 20 miles this morning. Oh yeah. I, and then, then they'll go read like Dost Dostoevsky. Dostoevsky. Know? Oh my gosh. And yeah. then they'll like, uh, you know, go and volunteer at a church and like, just, you know, I think about that a lot. Um, and I, 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 I put myself down a lot. Uh, it, it, it died. It died. Yeah. Um, 
because like yeah I think about it all the time dude it's like think about the people who engineered this iPad yeah it's like those people are Joe Rogan likes to say it like makes me look like a monkey you know it's, it's essentially like, fucking black magic yeah I, and there's a lot of people or like the the people working at SpaceX you know like the forefront of or just NASA's you know the the, the, the team at NASA like those people are heroic right um, almost in a sense like working for years dedicating their life to a problem to benefit you know mathematics to be able to build things i don't know and so yeah i think about that a lot for my own self and like wow you know there really are some people who amazing amazing create incredibly talented incredibly yeah. you know like um and it's like the right way to look at those people is not jealousy mm -hmm. it's not no like way, yeah. you know it's it's like a that person is incredible. That person is yeah, amazing. It's more admiration. I like hope. gratitude, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, it's same thing for painting. Yeah. You know? Again, it's like, it doesn't matter what anyone else is doing because mm -hmm. at, at any level, there's somebody that's doing what you want to be doing better than you. you know, even, yeah. even if you're the best artist, you know? A hundred percent. Yeah. You'll always find someone who's better at something than you without doubt. Yeah. Someone said that I, I, a while ago when I was younger and I thought about it and I was like, yeah, that's probably true. No matter what I do, there's probably another human being on the planet that's doing whatever I'm doing way better. Ten times, a hundred times. A hundred times. Yeah, right. Yeah. And again, it's like, but the problem is, is that no matter who you are, what I've seen is that there's like uh, universal problems. Mm. Like I'll go around the country and I'll hear people complain about their girlfriends or boyfriends or right. their jobs. And yep. It's like, it's weird to travel thousands of miles and hear that same complaint, that mm. same like, you know, anxiety right yeah. it's like a holy shit it's like we're all the same yeah. we're all like the same person just Pretty different much. circumstances and the problems could be at a different scale but they could they're they're you know it, it's the same root yeah. you know what i mean like jeff bezos or a rich person getting divorced with millions of dollars at stake you know it's the same thing as like same core issues as someone working a blue collar job losing you know shifts I don't know but yeah you're you're right man you're well, blowing my mind well good combo thanks man gets um, deep quick that's love yeah. it's fun to talk about though I think it's I think that's like the only thing to talk about you think so? I think I mean I think when anyone's doing anything they're like trying to solve that problem mm. it's like I think religious thinking like I don't believe in the Christian God and like the walking on water or the miracles I believe right. that they're like metaphors yeah for like explaining these concepts in like a you know in, in like stories you know it's like King Arthur resonate sort of yeah. King Arthur resonates with a ton of people because it's like it's it's fundamentally true to so many people mm -hmm. you know it's like people can like find a way that they've been King out King Arthur or you know they've they've had experiences like knights in the round table or whatever or, or like um you know when Luke Skywalker walks into the cave in Star Wars you know it's like that's a version of like somebody going and do something really scary that they're afraid of. Like yeah. Going overcoming. to the dark. Yeah. Yeah, like going to the dark place. You know, do something that's scary. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and it's like, uh, like when you're making your YouTube videos, like Stan was telling me, the only th reason anyone ever does anything is to distract themselves from the fact that they're gonna die. You know, because <laughs> like. Well, yeah, that's true. And like Stan uh, has I like, like. I have 200 subscribers on YouTube right now and he's yeah. 2.3 million. Yeah. And he has like, I don't know, how, I don't know how many more times that is, but yeah. it's like 200,000 times yeah. more yeah. people. And it's like, but we're doing the same thing. Right. We're just like trying to find meaning in like a, a subjectively or objectively meaningless world, yeah. you know? Um, and it's like, when you make YouTube videos, you're like, like, I mean, when you're painting, like you painted yourself in a crown mm -hmm. sword and stuff, I think that that's like, well, I, I, I'm, I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah. it's like trying to paint yourself as like a hero or trying to paint yourself as like in sure. a heroic. Yeah, you know. I mean, it's a lot of things. I think, I think it's really easy to talk very black and white because, yeah. like we said, like even cliches, like it's very true in a lot of senses. But that, the truth is that reality is so complex, and that. But like, like you said, yeah, I wanted to paint myself as a hero because I like Greek mythology. Yeah, I wanted to see myself heroic, but I also thought it would be cool. Yeah. I wanted to use some sort of color palette. I wanted to do a photo shoot. Right. I wanted to test my abilities and how to capture a photo for reference. I also thought it would be a good video for my YouTube channel in yeah. terms of the success of the viewership. 
people that help my business. So it, it was all of those reasons, you well, know, and probably even more. Absolutely, but but it's like the idea of you making a YouTube video is like you going and actually it being good for your business is like a direct, like I'm solving a like instead like th- a thousand years ago the problem we wouldn't be solving it. Uh, it wouldn't be like making YouTube videos. It'd be like getting food, yeah. right? And it's like maybe yeah. your version, like you know, fifteen hundreds. Uh, slew would be killing boars. Yeah, or d- making a more efficient hoe to plant. <laughs> exactly right, and, uh, and instead, corn. well, and instead of doing that, you're making YouTube videos. Yeah, right. right? Okay, yeah. No, so for that, yeah, that comparison, for sure. Yeah. Um, and it's like a, um, again, like going back to universal problems. I think we're tr- we're trying to solve the same thing. It's yeah. like YouTube video equals food, you know, totally. and shelter and you know? fulfillment. Like that's another yeah. thing. It's like yeah, it feels really fulfilling. Like the most affirmation I get. Again, I've said this like you know, dating girls, having sex with girls or making money. Like those are all very <laughs> normal societal side guys, yeah. things that give people affirmation yeah. and fulfillment. But like for me specifically, and it might be too much, I might lean on that too much, but like making work and working my hardest and holding myself to a standard and putting in so much effort and envisioning something and then going through the steps to execute it and then seeing it up on my wall or seeing, watching the video I made of it and all yeah. the work that goes in the video. That's like a lot of affirmation. And yeah. Like that's like really what helps me sleep at night. Yeah. Like if I have a good day at the studio, make something progress on a project or like even finish something, I'm sleeping well that night. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if I, asked a girl out and she rejected me or there's right. stuff going on with my family of course it does a little but like the whole and that's just because it's internalized me and my passion and it's right. like a very identifiable identifiable like part of my life but you know um it's totally true and there's and in terms of affirmation it's it's a it's it's up there absolutely and i think it's like a um when you look at it objectively it's just like a you know you making a youtube video mm-hmm. you just hang around your studio but the yeah. subjective meaning is way deeper than Totally. You know, anything, you know, like sex, drugs, money, whatever, yeah. you know. And it's weird because, like, we don't struggle eating, you know. Yeah. I've never been hungry, yeah. you know. I've never had, not had a place to sleep. Right. So it's like the new things. What are the new things that we need to, like, fill our, you know, uh, endless pit of desire or, or, or fulfillment? Meaning, right? Yeah, well, meaning, yeah. We live better than kings from the 17th oh, century. Oh, yeah. It's like, we, if we wanted to go to we pineapple. We pharaohs. Oh, and we live better. It's like I have a fucking. I, I can. I know everything, right? I know everything from my yeah, from dude. my cell phone. That's so like, funny. Of I can, course. And it's like that. That's like a miracle, mm-hmm. right? And the fact that I could ever not be great, ex- express a tremendous amount of gratitude for this thing is like a huge. Yeah, but you know, you, we're not. We're not like putting our positions of the pharaohs in the day. This is yeah. normal. Like right. so, yeah. Of course, we have to be grateful and like we're yeah. privileged. But like our uh, gratitude meter is just more. We're in the perspective of now. Yeah. We have to have. That's the only one we right. can because that's where we are. Oh, yeah, yeah. Of course, well, we can look back. Right. Well, and for them, it's like, for a, the peasant especially, it'd be like solving the problem of hunger would be way more meaningful to them than somebody getting a million followers on, totally. you know, on YouTube. Yeah. And it's like, it's strange that people can have their hunger needs and thirst needs and health needs met, but s- still not find meaning in their lives, mm-hmm. you know? Yep. Um, Precisely. And, and I think at that point, it's like, I mean, I dropped out of college. Me too. And I think college is a waste of time. Me too. You know, I think it's like... For you or for me. Well... I think it's wonderful for certain people. I, I, I think doctors it's, and lawyers and I, I think most people should go to higher education. Yeah. But that's a smaller percentage. I think 60 plus percent of people aren't lawyers, doctors, scientists, biologists. Um, right. But no, I agree. I think it's a waste of time for a lot of people or that the system of higher education, I completely interrupted you. I'm sorry. Oh, no, it's totally fine. But, but the system of higher education should just be pushed back to like 25 year olds. Yeah. Because you need time to experience and get a grip on what the fuck you're doing. Yeah. And yeah. What do you want to do? Yeah. Figure out what like the world is. And I think it's a, uh, like, I like the idea of higher education where you just go and read books for mm-hmm. four years. It sounds fucking awesome. Yeah. Or a system in place to really become an expert. Yeah. With uh, a, a past of extreme success, just like an atelier, like you know, like higher education should be the place where you learn everything you need to learn about the brain, and yeah. you, they have the resources for you to use. That's what I think it should. But now it's not that, like partying and social yeah. climbing and dumb, dumb stuff. It's a waste of money. I understand why people go, and I, I don't think it's a complete waste of time, but I think there are way more efficient ways to party. Totally. And, you know 
do like, you know, do other things, you know? And no, of course, and this talk about fulfillment and like a, a lot of people are getting that, and I think it's a switch. COVID, I think, helped that, but like yeah. a lot of people, even jobs. Again, I'm not in the corporate world, but I think a lot of jobs would are choosing like function based goal-oriented people over than the people that you know have the degree you know yeah. they want someone who could do the job the best yeah not someone who went to the school the best yeah yeah the and most did qualified. those games of tests and essays and of course that gives you qualification in many regards but especially me dude like i hired this kid who didn't graduate of course this is like obvious almost but like he didn't graduate college with a film degree or yeah. like a editing degree he grinded he left school he taught himself premiere pro yeah. he worked for another podcast you know he became an expert at what he understood with yeah. that with his function which is video editing and that's exactly what i needed and wanted yeah and so i think that's what a lot of kids are doing and it's kind of exciting yeah absolutely yeah. and it's it's like a i mean in the past for art especially you needed to apprentice to somebody to totally. learn the skills yep. but the thing that is it's like the internet is incredible it's essentially alexandria's library yep. you know you could learn whatever you want and the thing that's limiting you most is not the lack of information it's your ability to go and actually put in the work to do Without it doubt. like I the thing that i tell that. people is like the job of a teacher now is not to present the information because the information is cheap it's, uh -huh. it's to inspire the students that's completely right um yeah and it's like i found that like for me being around some of the people that I consider the best teachers, I can't. You, I can't get myself to draw. Mm. You know, it's like around Jeff or the people at the Watts or Proko yeah. or Carl Kopinski or any of those guys. Love Carl. It's, it's like there's no part of about what they do necessarily that actually inspires me to sit down and draw. Wow. You know, and it's like um, I could sit around and learn from these people for 30 years, and I would never say anything. You yeah. know, um, and it's like. I feel like I've become a way better artist by doing this trip than I ever would by learning from teachers that I really admire. No, I think that's totally true. I mean, if you, especially if we're differentiating artists versus like a draftsman or a yeah. technical drawer. Yeah, I think without doubt there's nothing better than this trip too. Absolutely. Um, I mean, dude, because that's the, it's so funny. That's like the big question I get or maybe you get um, about art. It's like, what inspires you? Like, what inspired you to draw that Cyclops? Or like, where do you gain your inspiration? And I've talked about this on other podcasts. And it's an interesting thing to say, but it's like there's no answer, and the answer is almost obvious. It's my yeah. experience yeah. as a sentient creature. It's right. like all of the things I've lived up to now, and the things I'm interested in, are because I don't know. That's the path I took to get interested in that. You know, there's not yeah. a really good answer. And of course, I could narrow it down to like I love big stories, like we were talking about, like yeah. huge high fantasy, Lord of the Rings, Brandon Sanderson. Greek mythology, like the classic tropes of stuff. And yeah, specifically through those, I can take out motifs that, you know, translate into visual things that affect or inform my art. But to be inspired is just, you know, experience. Absolutely. Negative and positive. Yeah, going back to the values thing. It's yeah, like, exactly. I think it's, uh, I think whenever a, a student is trying to learn from, or whenever the job of a teacher is not to make the, the student paint like the, the, the teacher, it's to make them paint like themselves. Mm, you know? Yeah. Um, and whenever I hear a teacher like, oh, this is the only way to do it. This is the correct way of drawing. I, yeah. I, it kind of makes me shy away from them. Totally. They like, should be imprisoned. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, yeah. Yeah. Sent to the gulag. Yeah, <laughs> or exactly. Something. Yeah. Um, but I think it's a, like, um, I, I think that's the difficult thing about teaching is like, maybe you have a student that has completely opposing values to you, but it's still your job to like, yeah. put them on their path. Totally. Know? Yeah. Not to like influence them too much and, mm -hmm. um, steal their voice from them definitely yeah that's the thing I, I it's one of the things I do really because um, I rip on myself a lot and I think I could be better in a lot of places but something I do hold to myself I think is the like you were talking about like I found out the things that I'm now better at and I've improved and you know I've my professional career of you know whatever it's because I found it for me by me and I discovered it and learned it without an institution yeah. without a teacher and I kind of persisted yeah. to learn failed a lot um, but like you know it, it, it's everything is so accessible it's like you know for everyone it's just the 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 removable factor is not going out and trying it or yeah. not giving it more than one shot you fail and you get removed and you don't try it again but yeah um, it's really wonderful and like that's why we are so lucky and we are pharaohs and you could be anything you want yeah 
It's, it, it no is really strange. No one wants advice from a 26-year-old <laughs> well, I, I, skinny I, blonde boy, but... I, or a 26-year-old quarter Asian man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it, it's true. It's like all the information is there, and maybe you are really terrible at drawing and you have some deficiency, but odds are, you know, you could probably learn anything, you know? I think yeah. I could be a rocket scientist if I dedicated the next 10 years of my life working Absolutely. really hard. But I don't have that passion, so I probably won't. Yeah, like going back to the values thing. Yeah. You know, it's like what you value determines what you see, and you don't see that as something that's worth, mm -hmm. you know, worth your time. Yeah. But maybe if you had rocket scientist parents, yep. and, you know, maybe you'd be more predisposed. I love predisposed. rockets. I love yeah. following SpaceX and everything, but I'm not an uh, engineer brain uh, yeah. mathematician. But yeah, I think you really could do anything. Or if you were forced to do it, you know, like yeah. if in this utopian world like someone had a gun to my family's head and for the or like implanted a chip in my brain right. it was like hey you gotta do this for the next five years yeah I would probably do it yeah. pretty well and right. I'd probably get good at it yeah yeah but, and, um, and then yeah. you'd be a rocket scientist yeah, exactly. yeah it'd be so, great yeah right. yeah um, and I, I'd imagine that rocket science is a lot like I heard Elon Musk talking about how the engineering he was doing when he was 20 is the same thing that he's doing in SpaceX just at a larger scale that's crazy you know? yeah. and it's, that makes sense totally you know? um, and Going like uh, we are t two 26 year olds that mm -hmm. might have no idea what we're talking about. I, I think a lot of it is not. I don't know what I'm talking about. Well, I, I was talking to another friend about this, and he was saying he was doing another podcast with his friend. With, with it was Ahmed and Steven Zapata, and they cool. were talking about how are we just fucking idiots? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like, yeah, we totally are. Totally, I <laughs> um, mean, absolutely. Because I, I, like I get nervous about that because like yeah. you could probably even see I rant so hard, I get caught up, and I love yeah. talking and it's yeah. fun, but you gotta really take it all with a grain of salt, everyone. Yeah. Right. Even like Joe Rogan, you know, like imagine being him. Imagine having millions of people right. um, listen to you and like take your word for like gold. You know, it's gotta be weird. Man. Yeah, and like millions of people. Yeah, and like I, don't, I mean, some people probably listen to what I say, and, but like you gotta remember, it's just I'm just a person. Yeah. I have my personal experience, opinions, views. I'm just a moron. Yeah, you know what I mean. Trying your best. I know what I know. I don't whatever. Oh, and again, I think it's, I think that's an important part of being a person is just acknowledging, like acknowledging your deficiencies and then, um, letting those deficiencies, like it doesn't de detract from what you're, mm -hmm. you know, what you can say, yeah. you know? Um, I think the second it becomes about like, I'm an idiot, I shouldn't say anything, then you're kind of, yeah. kind of stuck. That stinks. Um, yeah. But yeah. Um, we've been going for about an hour and 15 minutes or so. That's awesome. Do you want to keep going? Or? Whatever you want to do, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm chilling. Do you, do you have time? Or? Uh, yeah, probably, I mean, what time is I do have to get back? Uh, yeah, I'm down to do like 15 more. Yeah, yeah sure. 15, Let's do 20 it. more. Sounds good. That's no problem. Sick. Yeah, 15 more. We still minutes. got Sounds the good. wide rocking. Yeah, yeah, so these two died. That's wonderful. I yeah, love that. Yeah. The last soldier, <laughs> yeah, 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 the iPad. We're going. Yeah, I got the audio at least. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's like a. Um, again, looking at, like, going back to, like, watching a dog. Play with a stick mm -hmm. or watching you said the leaf like the oh yeah you look at a leaf you can look at a leaf for everything yeah. forever and it's yeah. like you know you could but you won't mm -hmm. you know and or when you watch a bird like just fly around or when you watch a bumblebee pollinate a flower or whatever when you watch a mailman deliver a letter it's like ultimately all those things are meaningless on a cosmic scale but it's like um you know the fact like i think that people do have a nature people do have like a like you paint, right? Mm -hmm. It's like in the same way a bumblebee pollinates flowers, you know? It's like, um, maybe that's part of who you are. Maybe that's part of your like cosmic contribution to yeah. the universe. And um, like, I think part of becoming a creative person is realizing you're not the best. You're, you're, you're not like Jesus or Muhammad or Buddha or whoever. You're, you're just a human being mm -hmm. you know you kind of accept your flaws you you can't be good at rocket science and painting yep. and writing poetry and yep. all these Run things marathons you have to give up stuff right yeah, you do yeah you have to pick and choose i mean especially to get to a level where you're competent competent right? exactly that's yeah. great it's exactly well put and um yeah that's and i think that because our world is becoming like you said, supercomputer, we know everything. Like a lot of people want that. A lot of yeah. people want to be everything. Yeah. And it's totally not possible. And the, the pursuit of becoming a business owner and a pro athlete, you know, it's like 
people are trying to fill every role and well and it, the people that we admire that might do that's like they're a business owner and an athlete and a great musician or yeah. something they're giving up something that we're not seeing yeah or maybe they have a bad family life yeah or you know i completely um see that and like i a little different side segue but something that i kind of get bummed out about by my my position my job and my life is like i do spend a lot of time on different things yeah. that require a lot of time right. and i kind of will nail them down right here it's like videography editing painting and then the other like arbitrage of life right. and those are simplified but like I a lot really get bummed because I know if I didn't do the other things like with the YouTube business and the social media and now it's even more yeah. logistical business stuff like I, the painting is getting low and like uh, if I if I went to the Grand Central school and I didn't do anything I know I would be at a more competent level yeah. and like I uh, desire that and I get bummed out I'm like oh because like I love doing it when I do it I want to do it more but I have to do the other stuff just Right. Same with the videography. Like, if I just because I did freelance video for a while before I kind of did more serious painting, but like maybe I would be making movies now, or maybe yeah. I would be like doing way more intense, awesome stuff. So, but but I love them all. So I feel so grateful that I can be at a higher level at the right. certain things I am now. Yeah. But it's the push and pull because you can't do everything. Yeah, absolutely. And the person that just focuses on drawing is a way better draftsman than you. And the person that focuses on just exactly. cinematography, yeah. but they lose out on the ability to draw or the ability to make yeah. movies. Yeah. And, you know, again, it's like going back to the, like, you are a singular human being mm -hmm. with only a certain amount of time. Yeah. And I think, like, again, going back to the idea of God is like, you're, you're in a sense, you have things that are put in front of you. It's mm -hmm. like you, the option to be a rocket science scientist was maybe never put in front of you in the yeah. same way that painting was right know? so in a sense like god gave you a quest or god gave you a mission to go and pursue do you believe that in in, in a sense yes okay because it's like so you believe that there was some higher power not navigating you but or maybe that's a word i i, I don't i don't know i don't know okay. what that means exactly right. you know I, I but i believe that things are put in front of you that you mm. can't control you mm. know and maybe that's God or maybe that's arbitrary nonsense. And I think yeah. it, it effectively does not matter, you know? Like, so then what would be the difference between, like, coincidence and God? Or is it, it the there's same? There's nothing. There's yeah. nothing. You know, it's like coincidence and, you know, um, yeah. you know, it's like a, um, like, I stumbled upon your YouTube video, mm. you know, and I contacted you. Right. And, you know, thought that maybe there's something with you and Proko. Yeah. You know, I was like, okay, right. maybe that's God, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. Or maybe that's just arbitrary nonsense. Yeah. But I guess what I'm saying is it, it doesn't matter either right. way. Okay. You know, yeah. Um, you don't need to put a label on it. Um, but the the outcome is the same. Yeah. It's like right. you know we get to have this conversation, we yep. get to have this meaning, and yep. it's like for me it's a lot more meaningful to say it was God. Okay. You know because something is coming out of this conversation. Yeah. That started from just an email, mm -hmm. right? And it's like, um, you know. Again, I think there are things that are put in front of you that you either say yes. Like, you only make, like, 10 decisions a day, right? Like, they, like for most of the time, you're on autopilot. Yep. Right? It's yeah, like, 100%. go get a bacon, egg, and cheese. Yeah, you know, that's go, not even a decision. Yeah, it's yeah. like, you know, go to the bathroom, right. you know, brush my teeth, yep. you know, text my friends. Mm -hmm. It's like, that's autopilot stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, but, like, how many, in like, singular decisions, unique decisions do you make a day? Mm -hmm. It's like, not that many, mm -hmm. you know? And it's like, what determines... Like, you know, so many success is the culmination of a hundred million small decisions, you know? Um, wow. It's like, you can only affect those small decisions. Mm -hmm. You know, you can only affect how you respond to an opportunity that's put in front of you, you yeah. know? And that's based on what you value, you know? Um, you gotta write, like, just down, man. <laughs> right. I wanna see it in writing. Recording it on a podcast. And yeah, no. Yeah. Exactly, yeah, that's even better. Yeah, doing my best, I guess. I'll, I'll, I'll write a book at some point. But yeah, that's cool, the value system. It's a good way to describe kind of the engine of our doings and people's doings. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we're not getting confused about the grayscale value. Yeah. We're talking about human value. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, I think drawing and all this stuff has a lot of parallels. Yeah, it's no, like, I think it's a great, and especially, I think there's great analogies to be drawn with that. Yeah, uh, drawn. <laughs> yeah. yeah, wow. No pun intended. No pun intended, yeah. Uh, it's deep stuff, though, dude. And I, know, like, I feel like I'm tripping over words trying to think and articulate it because it's so vast and 
The world is so big. Hard to kind of communicate. I got to rewatch this podcast. And <laughs> what I, said, but... I appreciate it. That's very kind of you to say. No, of course. Yeah. Um, again, going like I stru- I my instinct is is to think no one would care about my ideas. You know. Um, yeah. Why do you think that? Uh, I was bullied as a kid. Oh yeah. You picked well, up that would make sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. It kind of fucked me up a yeah. bit for a while. And, uh, that makes sense. Yeah. And you still. I, I, some I, of that yeah yeah I, I, I hold, beliefs of hold on to it yeah. yeah 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 and it's like I'm trying to like understand what that means for me mm-hmm. you know because it's like it's part of who I am at this point you know I, I can't sense. can't help it years are formative years yeah yeah you for a while yeah but do you think you're slowly growing out of it or that yeah. there's improvement or that I'm I'm it's still part of who I am mm-hmm. but I think it's like and I'm glad it happened at this point mm-hmm. you know I think it's part of who I am That's in a good you. way you know yeah. and I think it's like a um you know, it's, I'm becoming, it's, it's not like I'm becoming somebody else. I'm learning, I'm adding things to who I am. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, I'm doing these road trips. I'm meeting tons of people and like doing things that I'm proud of. Um, I'm like working on Proco and I'm, you know, getting into cycling and painting and riding my bike and doing this podcast. And, yeah. Um, like a, tons of other things that I could be like, okay, you know, that was a thing that happened in my life and it got really bad, mm-hmm. but I'm seeing that it can get a lot better, totally. you know? And that, like, you know, like, you never know what's going to happen in the future. Like, there could be more bad things, you know? It's out of your control. Not that, like... But it, yeah. I think it's just, like, uh, like the analogy of kind of, like, just the bag of experiences. Like, yeah. that was just one of the cards you had. Well, and, and it's, like, I mean, I was bullied as a kid pretty badly, but I also, like, I'm sure you've seen what's happened in Afghanistan. Yeah. You know, it's, like... My situation when I was a kid was way better. Sure. You know. Yeah, but like you can't. You could always draw a comparison, and, and like you know, I mean, like you still gotta remember yeah. that was bad and it affected you, and you're just Absolutely. a kid in the United States. Like, of course, there's like people's whole family get raped and murdered, yeah. like, and you could always compare to that. But to, and to draw gratitude from your situation, of course, is hard. But yeah, no, I get what you're saying. But I think I don't know what I was even saying, but like, do you? you think this practice as a trip like you're you're getting better of trying to like not innately think that people are going to think the worst of you or like the worst case scenario is going to happen like, well a part of it is like putting myself in a place where i need help from people mm. you know it's like i mean on those bike trips i would do i would like stay in strangers houses and i would like i, I didn't sleep on the side of the road but i would yeah. like have to like you know it'd be mile 60 into a 100 mile ride and i'd be like i still have five hours left and i'm very tired right now yeah you know? i have to i have to keep going then re- and going and doing it staying in stranger's house and nothing bad happening you mm-hmm. know it works out fine you know right yeah and then see, open humanity a little well and like seeing that people are mostly good yeah you know? and the kids that picked on me when they were younger looking at them now it's like they have their own shit going on totally. you know? parents were bad totally. ad- addicted to stuff and I mean, yeah, I mean, that's like a, pe- people who pull it usually are the ones with the issues. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, some of that energy came out. I, I picked on kids when I was younger, too. Mm-hmm. Just like kind of a vicious cycle. Mm-hmm. And, it really is. Um, and looking at that stuff, it's like, wow, you know, we're all just, we're all people and we're all like suffering all together. None of us are really bad. None of us are, you know, everyone is doing the thing that they think is the correct thing. Otherwise, they wouldn't be doing it, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, Again, that's like a very general statement, I believe, to an extent. But I think it's like some people, I think we're almost fortunate to be able to like really articulate this much and be aware. You know, like the majority of humans on Earth are literally like almost like we were talking about back in the day, just doing as much as they can so they can eat. Yeah. Or like the people, you know, working blue collar minimum wage jobs. Like not that they aren't capable of thinking like this, but it's like they're... Kind of. They don't really give a shit. They're just, like, trying to put food on the table and right. figure it out. And it's Strange. Yeah, and they're just, like, but that's all they care about because that's what they want to do. But they're probably not happy a lot of yeah. the situations. But that's, like, the cards they were dealt and what they got to deal with. I don't know. I just got lost. I forgot what you said, but. Yeah. I, did, I, did, I don't I, know. Yeah, I guess, like, I, you know, everyone um, struggles with, um, I forgot what I said too. Yeah, but I know, but I, I I don't know. All this stuff is like, I don't, um, like somebody who works a blue collar job who struggles a lot. That's in a sense more meaningful. Like I have friends who are massively wealthy, mm-hmm. hundreds of millions of dollars, mm-hmm. you know, and they have struggle. Fi- they struggle finding meaning in their lives. Totally, absolutely. You know? And it's like maybe the fact that they get to 
do a blue collar job and you know have to worry and struggle about putting food on the table actually provides meaning for their lives totally and like they're they're me- providing meaning for like supporting their family absolutely because they're working their balls off and it, that's actually maybe a blessing yeah in, in disguise yeah yeah because I mean, of course I, if you're from that situation you're looking at the elite yeah driving around and staying in five star hotels you're like fuck I yeah, want that sounds, yeah yeah right but I bet I know again I know a lot of very wealthy people who have no personality they yeah. live for the weekend they make a lot of money but they have yeah. no passion yeah and they're probably looking at you know a starving artist who can make something amazing and they're jealous as shit yeah you know they're like wow I wish I had that right I and guess it, the moral of the story is you can never win yeah, yeah. well, yeah, yeah, yeah. well you're, you're, yeah, I think that's true I mean it, it, it's all about your perspective yeah you know it's all like there are moments where you see where you feel like this is exactly what I want to do yep yeah. And moments of like, I'm a fucking loser, yeah. you know, and I have the same exact thing. Totally. It's like, I have friends that are making, that are younger than me, that are making like $300,000, $200,000 yeah. a year. And I'm like, I live in a van. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, sh- I'm homeless, you know, shit. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, but I, I think that's like good. It's yeah. good that I'm having those thoughts, uh-huh. you know. And honestly, the, the truth of the matter is both people can probably do it eventually, but especially when you get older, like it's really hard to change. It's like, yeah. especially as you're an adult, those people with corporate jobs making a bunch of money, it's way harder to like give it up and, you know, start painting and give it up. But I yeah. think it's almost, again, they're, they're similar in how hard they are. But for you living in a van, being homeless, you're not homeless, but you're, you chose to do this. And yeah, it's yeah. wonderful. But you know, you could easily, not easy, you could easierly than them probably, you know, get into a path in your life to make a lot of money, you Absolutely. know? And well, I think it's better that you kind of know yourself and you've given time and again i'm almost like venting about myself i'm a lot my, my family you know where i'm from it's a lot of wealth and people go to good yeah. schools to get good jobs to get a lot of money for, to, for, for, from the same area pretty much yeah exactly yeah, yeah, so you yeah, know yeah, but yeah, yeah. so i'm like really happy that i took maybe the the beaten path and yeah. did a little different stuff and found out who i am you know i still don't I'm, yeah of course figure it out i lay in bed at night like <laughs> who am i but like you know again the affirmation i have like quantifiable work that i've done and yeah. like a quantifiable idea of who I am and what I enjoy. Yeah, absolutely. But, um, yeah. Well, again, it, it, I think the answer to all this stuff is very simple. It's like you value what you value mm-hmm. and the thing to figure out is what you value, mm. you know, because that's who you are. That's fundamentally who you are. Yeah. Um, and that's the importance of like trying a bunch of things as you figure out like, oh shit, I don't like being a banker. I don't like painting. I don't right. like being a, a musician. But I'm also excited but, to figure out other things I like, yeah. you know, so I'm not, it's exactly what you said, the value thing that I'm going to yeah. rewatch and maybe mantra mantra eyes in my life but not limited to that yeah value what you value and you are what you value but the you could always discover new values yeah was that a good thing absolutely asterisks towards that yeah yeah absolutely right you know i I think it's a the way i've been looking at myself the way i've been trying the way i've looked at myself as an artist in the past has been i'm a painter Mm. i'm an artist right the way i'm trying to look at myself now is i am somebody who paints yes not an artist. Right. I'm I'm somebody who does art, not right. somebody who is an artist. Well, you're one of one. You're one of eight billion skin sacks. Yeah. That paints. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. And it's like I paint in the same way I go for walks. Yeah. And I watch movies. Uh-huh. And I also, you know, and the second it becomes I am a painter, it becomes like you can fail. You know. Yeah. Whereas, like, when you're just a, you're just somebody who paints. It's like, oh, as long as I paint, I am successful. Mm-hmm. You know. True. Yeah. 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 Um. Thanks for doing this again. Of course, man. This was super fun. I can't wait to share it, and hopefully people will... Well, again... Fans right. of mine will watch, because it's, again, like, I love... My role in my podcast is more of the conductor, and it's, like, interview-based. Yeah. It's This was so free and wonderful, and just like you said, you want it to be as much as a normal conversation. Yeah. I love that, and I think I forgot half the things I said, but it's definitely <laughs> yeah, interesting. Well, we recorded and, it. Like I said, you're very good at uh, articulating Thanks, how you talk and appreciate it clearly and also good vocabulary i love it man i like i'm trying to get better at that and it's it's so fun to do right well, do you enjoy it you love i love it, it. yeah you're, I love you're nervous about it. or you get anxiety about it yeah yeah it's totally worth it it's fun yeah it, it, it's like killing a dragon you know and another thing to just not go on another tangent why i love youtube and videos in the more kind of uh overarching uh, agenda is like it's kind of like documenting that point in time forever. You know, yeah. as long as there's an internet connection, like yeah. those videos, our videos are there yeah. for to forever be viewed. Yeah. You know, so that's kind of cool. Absolutely. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Not that, you know, anyone cares. Right. But like for us or like, you know, or if I die, you know, like well, I, my so, family will be able to see it. My friends are like, it's there. 
Well, I probably have had collectively like 3,000 views on all my podcasts yeah. so far. It's not that many, but mm-hmm. if I were to publish a book and it were to sell 3,000 copies, yeah. that's a lot of fucking, that's a lot book. of books, yeah. right? For it's, sure. like, it's like I'm already at like a successful book yeah. just by, just by well, starting no, out. No, yeah, no, yeah. Right. right. Um, yeah, it's, it's surreal. It's cool. Yeah. But a lot more people will listen to things than they will read a book because it's, uh, less barriers of entry. Yeah, and of course you said you're not trying to like make money from this and it's not like some business venture you have all this pride on. It's literally just like experiential, inspiring. Yeah. It's like a, it's like a, that shark companion, that little thing that follows sharks. Yeah, yeah. Like oh, yeah, yeah. That is the, the road trip. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then this is just like a little, yeah. you know, side dish appetizer dessert type of thing to go to pair with that experience so i think that's great hell yeah man and you can't lose no no i can't yeah yeah Yeah. sweet yeah well again i appreciate doing this you bet and it's not that hot it's not that hot we had a breeze i was kind of nervous it was hot earlier but it's not that bad i gotta stretch it out a little but already did i'm gonna i'm gonna pause all right